The yellow semi-final between Kramnik and Ivanchuk was a much closer affair. This pairing reminded me of one of those World Cup soccer matches where neither team wishes to risk too much, content to let the play drift through into extra time, because they'd both been practicing penalties for the whole of the previous afternoon. The 25-minute games were perhaps the most tedious that I've ever seen. They looked like countless Ribley Anderson draws from those Super GM tournaments in the late 70s and early 80s. But the sudden death blitz was something else. Ivanchuk had drawn the white pieces, meaning he had six minutes to Kramnik's five, but of course he had to go for the win. He began by playing pawn to c4. Kramnik played c6, inviting Ivanchuk to play d4 and then d5, and they get into a Slav defence. But instead, Ivanchuk played his pawn to e4. And after d5, it looks like it's going into a Karakhan with the Panov Botvinnik attack that Ivanchuk as white is playing. So now d4, knight f6, knight c3, e6, just preparing to bring out the bishop, knight comes to f3, and now after bishop b4, there's yet another transfer position into another opening. So they began with an English and then into a possible Slav, then into a Karakhan, and now they've transposed into a Nimzo Indian defence. If I should have brought the bishop out to d3. Kramnik captured on c4, white recaptured. Black castled. And Ivanchuk did the same. It's all pretty standard stuff. And now Kramnik plays a slightly unusual move. He plays his pawn to a6. Now that's that's quite aggressive. Normally in this opening, Black just contents himself by playing pawn to b6 and then Fianchetto's his bishop on b7. But here, Kramnik is playing more aggressively. He's playing a6 with the idea b5 and then playing the bishop b7. Ivanchuk preempted the strike of the b-pawn and dropped his bishop back to b3. Then came b5 and it was here that Ivanchuk brought the audience out of the slumber that they'd been in from the first two games. Played an extraordinary move, very brave move indeed. Played his pawn up to d5. Kramnik captured on c3. Now if pawn takes bishop, then simply pawn takes pawn, black is a pawn up. But if Anshuk captured on e6, this was his big idea. He's sacrificing a whole piece, but he has tremendous compensation. Kramnik retreated his bishop. Now if Anshuk captured on f7, check, and the king went in the corner. It's really hard to imagine that white has enough compensation for this piece. That pawn on f7 is the whole point of the sacrifice. It's really in the heart of black's position. But really, it, it looks cut off from the rest of white's forces. But Ivanchuk's judgment was splendid. He proved over the next few moves that in fact the position is much more difficult for black to play than it first looks. Played his bishop out to f4, now that's a really important move. So he wants to play the bishop into d6, attacking the rook on f8. And interestingly, he, he allows Kramnik to exchange the queens off here, but he reasons that his attack is going to be just as strong. Kramnik played knight to c6, and the bishop went into d6. Bishop g4. And now Ivancho could take the rook off, but he prefers to wait a couple of moves and just build the pressure. He plays rook c1, attacking knight on c6. And Kramnik took the chance to block the bishop's attack to the rook, played knight to e7. But then came bishop c5, and that is a really unpleasant move. Just opening up the line of the queens again. So once again, 
Kremlin. It could exchange queens, but it's not going to lessen the attack. Those bishops on b3 and c5 are very powerful indeed. Knight came into e4, attacking the bishop on c5. Now queen takes d8. Bishop takes d8. He had to do that to defend the knight on e7. But now Ivanchuk has a fourth sequence of moves to gain in his, his material. He played bishop takes e7. Bishop takes e7. And now rook f e1, attacking the knight on e4. And of course, if the knight moves, then rook takes e7. So Kramnik defended the knight with bishop f5. But the pressure mounted with bishop c2. Kramnik found a tricky way of just preventing material loss for the moment. He played rook c8. Now, if bishop takes e4, then rook takes c1, rook takes c1, bishop takes e4, and he's just about survived. Instead, Ivanchuk found knight d4 piling on the pressure, attacking the bishop, which had to retreat to g6, and now came knight e6. So he's just forgetting about taking the piece on e4 for the moment, but just increasing the pressure, attacking the rook on f8. And it was at this moment that Kramnik paused. He had a time advantage over Ivanchuk, but realized his position had gone downhill. So he had to try and find a way of keeping the game alive for long enough to try and win on time. And the half minute or so that he invested here on this next decision really paid off. And the next few moves came in a great flurry, and it really rattled Ivanchuk. Rook takes f7. Bishop takes e4. Rook takes c1. Rook takes c1. Bishop takes e4. And now rook c8 check, which gets the piece back. And it almost looks as though white is winning on the spot. But Kramnik had calculated this all out from the moment when Ivanchuk played knight e6. He played bishop f8. Then came knight takes f8. Looks like there's going to be a back rank mate. But Kramnik avoids this by playing h6. So after the knight check, then the king can move up to h7. Ivanchuk played f3, attacking the bishop, and at the same time giving his king some room as well. Bishop came back to b7, attacking the rook. Rook d8. Then king g8, knight e6 check, and king h7. So the position is cleared. White has recovered the piece, and with the extra pawn it has good winning chances, but the position is hardly relevant. With both players down to their remaining few seconds, time is the crucial factor, and it was Kramnik who was better able to cope. He went into hustle mode, hunching over the board, making his moves absolutely instantly. Ivanchuk simply couldn't adjust to the new situation. He dithered, and his time ran out. It was like watching a man drown. I get the impression that Ivanchuk is too pure a chess player to cope with the rough and tumble of speed chess. For him, chess is an art, but for Kramnik, it is a sport. And it was his greater pragmatism in the closing moments that proved decisive.